my dear viewers, beginning today is the official Alliteration Gaming Patreon and channel members. Throughout my Patreon, we've got quite a few tiers you can check out in order to gain special perks and even commission videos that you'd like to see me upload onto the channel. Every tier includes a shout out on my supporter card at the beginning of all of my videos, along with the benefits of the tier itself. Following that, you can now also join the Alliteration Nation by becoming a channel member on the YouTube side of things. Pledging your subscription here as a member of the channel is going to grant you the same shout out on my supporter card as all the Patreon tiers do, as well as access to the members only channel on my Discord. You'll gain a member badge that will level up as you stay subscribed and access to my exclusive emotes when I stream on YouTube. If you're interested in checking out the Patreon, I'm going to have the link in the description and in the pinned comment down below, as well as the link to my Discord should you want to join that as well. And if you want to become a channel member, the big beautiful join button is front and center on my homepage right here. And if you do decide to support the channel in any way whatsoever, know that I am unimaginably grateful and I can't wait to provide you with even more top-notch content at my trademark top speed. Additionally, it's time for the return of the referral code. If you're new here and you're just getting into the game, you've got to make an account on the Universus Gaming Network. When you're signing up, you can use my exclusive referral code alliteration to let Jasco know that I brought you on board, which directly supports me and my work. Having an account on the UGN site is going to allow you to sign up for tournaments, participate in events, locate stores that support the game near you, and much, much more. Playing in events and or mailing in pack wrappers is actually going to accrue loyalty points onto your account, which you'll then be able to redeem for exclusive promo cards in the mail for absolutely free. An account on here is an integral part of playing this game, so make sure you sign up and you use my code alliteration to help me continue doing what I love. I would really, really appreciate the support. You guys absolutely killed it on the last one with all of the signups, and I am really excited to run it back with you all. Now, let's get on to the video. Good evening, my dear viewers, and welcome to another Alliteration Gaming video. My name is Levi, and today we're going to be doing another Build-A-Deck. This time, my boy, my good patron Brandon Barry over at the Universus Lab has sent in a life muscular list to me that he's been very, very keen on lately. He says that he's really, really enjoying the Determined Victory Smash loops, getting to that alternate win condition, but he's having trouble making his way there, getting enough counters on, and really just stabilizing his resources as a five-hand size character. So those are a lot of the things that we're going to be looking to improve upon in the deck as well as just increasing the resource management that it has and the overall fluidity of gaining counters and putting pressure on our rival. Go ahead and kind of give me the, you know, the, the, the pitch, the general idea of what you want this muscular deck to be doing and uh, how you want me to help you improve it. Okay, so um, I know that I wanted to play, since he's on life, I wanted to play the package it has the command pigeon flock and has allies in it and could utilize you know training weights uh, you know it also has ready set go so it can replace it and draw a card you get plus one in your hand size basically if it's not an attack it tries to draw one um, with the floating around my babies the only reason I have it in there is because of the fact that I don't block but being able to put damage on my attacks is like rough because like I don't have to destroy with self-sacrifice but if I have one or the other if I have both out it's just really good but a lot of times just having access to being able to self-sacrifice on a five-hander we don't have that luxury mm -hmm. so having floating around my babies was something to put damage now with the list that's sitting over there on the table there's a couple of foundations that's not in this um, one being the one, if you check it, it gives the plus two or minus two. It's got All Might on it. I don't know the Hero, names of these Hero's cards. Hero's Inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like, you build those, you have this guy, you put that in your card pool, you draw a card, then they deal damage and you pull it down, face down. Mm -hmm. And then he's got another one that goes, come in, give it plus, plus two, minus one, add it to the card pool, give minus two, take damage, pull it down. So I was thinking that those foundations need to be in the deck, just oh, for the yeah. fact that the uh, the masked menace, right? Now, like I've already done the minus damages, so at the end of their card pool, they just give me three foundations. It, it's like okay, I have three cards in my card pool. You keep attacking, I just get three cards. Uh, I get counters on my character, and then you know, when you go into your turn, there was some attack turns in here. That's that's really cool. Uh, the instant shining flash 
uh, was an easy sideboard out option. Uh, it still gave me access to the, you know, I know this kind of looks like a, a, a Momo d uh, deck, but it I, does just I look like your Momo list. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't have any options for momentum heat. And then I was like, well, it also, you know, flips a foundation and it gives me minus one difficulty to my next and then it's a plus one low block. So, and being a high attack, it's really good for home run comet. Um, so like I have like this small package in here and then if like they fight through that then like you can just like oops uh, I guess I'm putting 15 damage on this determined victory smash and then it picks it up and then you play it again I played a determined victory smash 16 times before I committed my character and I'm like this is retarded like Josh is like how's this pop I like why is this not banned yeah, I mean, so like Determined Victory Smash is definitely definitely the elephant in the room uh, when it comes to the life muscular decks, and it is a pretty pretty crazy daisy thing to be doing. Uh, we definitely have to get to that point though. Um, so I guess a few things that I kind of want to point out uh, with some of the packages you were talking about uh, from your foundations and your attacks, the whole floating around my baby self-sacrifice thing, being able to valuably put damage on your moves. Are you struggling to find damage on your moves as muscular? Not really. Um, I just, I was, there was a game that I was like, oh, well, he can't block this if I had two more damage on this double overhead hammer fist. And so, like, I was like, okay, well, you know, we'll add three of these and then get a better block and we'll add three of these and then, you know, just hope it's a play and not in my hand. Mm -hmm. And then we flip a tight lift because, you know, if I didn't have a tight lift out there because I needed the damage on the, the, as much damage as possible on that thing so that I could pitch the momentum and give it the speed. Um, yeah, it's but, possible. So, like, I mean, looking at our attack lineup, <coughs> we definitely don't have... Oh, you're good. Um, I think the main thing about our attack lineup is this is a very good, like, generic life attack lineup, but I don't know if it actually interacts with our character very well. You know, we're doing, like, these home run things for big damage. Instant Shining Flashes will, like, string stuff along. Command Pigeons will, like, build in new things. These are all, like, good things to be doing, but they're not really accelerating our muscular minigame, which is survive a bunch of small damage attacks, get a bunch of counters, and then play a bunch of efficient moves that also get us more counters. You see what I'm saying? Oh, okay. So then I see what you're saying. So that's why you play the the nightmare. That's that's why you would want to play the nightmare physique in this because of the fact that it just straight up just puts a counter on your character. So the nightmare physique actually takes a counter away for some plus speed. Oh, it, it but that's takes uh, one. but that that's where the the value of it actually does come in though is the thing about muscular right is. Take a look at something like Home Run Comet, right? This is this three high for okay. four that can potentially get massive, 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 right? You know, we get a couple charges in the pool, a couple momentum. It can be like a 16, 17 damage move. Uh, but then if we're going to put like all of our muscle counters on it anyway, it's going to get really big. When you're playing muscular, you're not necessarily in the in the department of trying to find moves that want to pump damage. You want to find moves, because muscular is going to do that already, right? You want to okay. find some moves that are going to either pump your speed so that you can make sure those big damage pumped moves land, or you want to find things like throws or things that guarantee damage like the muscle rush that are going to guarantee you counters, right? We, I, I, we either want to be playing a move that gets us counters, gets us resources, or gets really really fast and is gonna be able to actually get that pumped up damage through you see what i'm saying okay so i've got a, a, a handful of attacks to kind of look at right here uh that are really really going to serve a handful of purposes as well um so if you feel like you might be struggling to get more counters on i've got things like the overhead reversal which is kind of like the best of both worlds it builds in a zero so you get that plus one in resources and it's a throw which means you guarantee getting a counter because it's going to deal damage uh, then I've nice. also got the Muscle Rush here, which is effectively a throw, right? If it's fully blocked, it deals one. That's another counter guaranteed. And when you block with it, you also get to draw a card. So again, it's going to recur use of resources. You know, Overhead's going to replace itself with a foundation. Muscle Rush is going to replace itself with a card in hand when you block with it. Um, and then if you feel like you're struggling to get moves through, uh, I've got Nightmare Physique, which is effectively, at the cost of one counter, a seven speed move. I've also got something like Piercing Needle, which is a six speed move, if you use its enhance. Only three damage, but again, 
our character is going to put a bunch of damage on it, so it's okay. And then I've also got Setup Strike, which is just a lot of speed. A lot of speed across two attacks, which, you know, when it's a six high for five, not super scary. But let's say we've got four or five muscle counters. Now this is this four diff is now a six high for nine or ten or something. And we just do it for existing, right? Not at the cost of stringing something big like a home run comet turn. Okay. So That makes I, sense. Yeah, so that's that's kind of like what ideally you want your attacks to be doing in muscular. Also, you're playing the Determined Victory Smash, so we want to make sure that we're getting a lot of counters. This is like our late game alternate win con that just says, hey, if we reach 10 counters, man, this is infinite and the game is just over, <laughs> right? Right. So I know you, you, you kind of said that you, you, you're, you seem like you're pretty fond of everything going on in your attack lineup. Um, is there anything that you feel like could make its way to be an expendable first in the interest of getting things like these guaranteed counter cards or just things that are going to put a bit more speed in your deck? I felt like the zero gravity lift. Yeah, I get to, you know, guarantee some damage over. I don't, I do get a counter off of it. I do get to pick up another attack and it does clear you know mm -hmm. but um i felt like it could have just been something else at that i think point, you know? i think if we're gonna devote because i think some portion of your attack lineup uh should be devoted to an amount of cards that guarantee counters because it's just it's your character's mini game you know okay. um and i think if we are gonna play a throw in our deck i would rather it be the overhead which is gonna plus us in resources as a five-hander very very crucial or we play the muscle rush which is going to be cheaper to play i mean they're both four diffs right there be both of these are going to be cheaper options to play uh they're both going to guarantee that same kind of counter and they both have other uses whether it's building a free one or drawing a card ideally i would really like it if both of these cards are in our deck uh to be honest yeah for sure the instant shining flash the only reason i had it in there is because i needed momentum hate but i i'm fine with losing that card because like i mean if my opponent has momentum and they're trying to race me, that means they're putting counters on my character, so, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I, mean, I would definitely sideboard it. Momentum hate is very important in this in this format going forward, but I do think it's a bit more of a sideboard card. Um, so, sure. the, the other main thing that we uh, that we denote, if we take out the grav lift and the shining flash, replace them with some overheads and some muscle rushes, I think that, that also brings us to a point where Homer and Comet probably doesn't have a place in the deck anymore. So we don't have yeah, all sure. charges and highs anymore, right? Yeah. So let's say we cut the two lift, we cut the two flash, we cut the two home runs. That gives us six slots. We could do three overhead and three muscle rush. Okay. Yeah. I like how that sounds. So now we've got we've got these six cards in here that the second they get on our board, they are guaranteed counters. They, they sure. are they are guaranteed counters, which is going to feel very nice. So where's our muscle rushes? Beautiful. Um, so the the other main question that I have with your attack lineup, I know you said you were fond of it, but how much mileage do you feel like you're really getting out of the command pigeon flock? Uh, not really. I think uh, the only the only really cool thing was is whenever I had two gravity lifts i picked it up and then picked it up and then mm -hmm. played it and then and then it's like oh well i just got free foundations but i mean at that point you know it the only reason why i was putting it in there is because i was using the friends of animals to put but i mean it was just i mean at that point it could have just back alley haymaker could have just you know be the the card that we play that does that because it's got stun two on it or it can draw us a card yeah. On top of that, we have both back alley and overhead, which can both build a foundation in. So I think we've got enough of that. And also when it does, because like our only target for this command pigeon flock is friend of animals. And one of the biggest things in our foundation lineup is uh, we've got way too many three difficulties for a five hander. Right. Friend of animals. Right. <laughs> and, and the fact that we don't have a way to activate the response on the friend of animals like these two cards are obviously really good with each other right pigeon and friend of animals but when they're kind of the only things working with each other i'm just not sure if that engine is worth the space in our deck for sure so i, I think sense. those three commands could probably better off be doing mm, i mean 
we have Setup Strike, Pierce Needle, and Nightmare Physique as really good options to pump speed. Alternatively, Copy Harden uh, is a big damage move, which, I mean, we already pumped damage, so it's not too relevant, but one of the cool things about Copy Harden is Copy Harden lets you block with your attacks, take the next attack, build that attack face down from your pool, and then pick it up later with Copy Harden. Kind of like how Harden Jab does in a lot of the good symbol decks. Nice. Yeah, I like that. I think so. that's more... That's more... Plus, you get that Breaker 1. Breaker 1 is very nice. I think it's it, it's a matter of, do you kind of want that utility a little bit more, or would you rather something that puts some more speed on your moves? Um... Uh, I do like Setup Strike, too. I really maybe, enjoy Setup maybe, Strike. Maybe set, Setup Strike, because it can give itself speed, mm -hmm. and then it gives your next speed. And usually the next one is going to be a lot faster because if your opponent blocks your rival blocks the first you know the setup strike then you know your next one's almost guaranteed to be like a seven speed or something like that yeah pretty much everything is going to be seven uh you get to start with three speed on the double overhead which is also really oh nice you just smash them <laughs> yeah ma makes makes it a little nicer if you don't have like a ton of counters just yet i do i do not mind it's, that and since we have I, I like overheads and muscles we have a bit more guaranteed momentum now too so we can afford the cost and setup strike yeah that it's like a gotcha play, you know. If they block that, you have the. You were thinking about not attacking yet, with the, uh, the you know, double overhead hammer fist, and all of a sudden you're like, well, he blocked it, so I guess we can, you know, guarantee a lot of damage on this thing. Right, and like the three speed is scary on everything because everything has plus a billion damage, right? Just because we're muscular, <laughs> we're we're, we're yeah, we exist. For sure. Yeah, everything gets super big. Um, Okay, so I, I I like these attacks a lot better. I feel like we're, we're a lot more focused now as opposed to just, hey, we have 20 solid life attacks in our deck, right? Now, you know, we've got we've got the we've got the stuns here. We've got the guaranteed momentum. We've got the speed pump. We have our alternate win con and also between double overhead muscle rush and overhead reversal, we have 4 7 10 attacks that guarantee a counter. Nice which is going to make our determined victory smashes get a lot scarier a lot faster. So our attack our attack turns are a lot scarier than they was before. They're a lot scarier, they're a lot more fluid, they're a lot more productive because we're either like we're either really really re we're either generating some very scary attacks or we're generating counters or we're generating foundations or we're doing even more of those things all all at the same time. Nice. So let's take a look at these foundations now. Uh, one thing I do want to note, we are at 20 attacks now, uh, and our deck is 69 cards. So if anything, I would actually like to trim our deck a little bit down size-wise. Alternatively, we could keep around this 65 to 70 range and put in a couple more attacks. Okay. Uh, just because 20 and 69 is a little bit under the average, and you already want to be over the average because you are a five-hand size character. For sure. Um, so I think we can we, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of see if we have like a lot of foundations we want to keep in here uh, But I think the probably the first place I want to start with is just kind of going through and identifying weak links um, We can go ahead and take out the friends of animals because we've already cut the command pigeon flock um, And while we're trimming our three diffs, uh, I don't know if we need rescue completed in this deck uh, We I don't know if we really really have enough cards to block enough to make this card worthwhile yeah, a lot of times I didn't have enough face downs to actually benefit having this card in the stage. A lot of times I just ended up blocking with it. Yeah, I think, because uh, like, I, I would like to, to get more in the range of like six or seven three diffs, and so I think one of these three has to go. It can't be pump up, because that's like the best card in our deck. <laughs> it's all it's all, sure. about, it's all about pump up, man. Uh, and Excited for Blood is really, really good draw power for our five-hander. Uh, I think the speed reduction, just not super necessary in this guy. We don't block enough right. for this to be relevant. Um, armored Muscles... Uh, I, I do like Armored Muscles just for helping, like, protect the Determined Victory Smash, right? Because being able to to commit it to commit something that grants a damage penalty, that's going to stop any of, like, the stat resets that are going to mess with our, our, our infinitely looping Determined Victory Smash. Uh, I think, though, Armored Muscles is okay at, like, a two-of main, two-of sideboard. Okay. So I think we can go there. Tell me about Window Shopping. I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of this guy in this in this deck. Um, the window shopping, it was really strong when I had three of them out, but a lot of times that happened in a five-hander, it's not really that, not, it doesn't happen that often. Mm -hmm. Um, 
you know, I flipped it, I played an attack that was a throw, and then I flipped the other one, and then it gave me, you know, like a, a Excited for Blood, which I didn't have one in hand. And then uh, I saved the other one for next turn, and then I was able to hit one of the attacks off the top of my deck and then pick it up and play it again. And then uh, I was just trying to dig to, mm -hmm. um, you know, there was a game that I needed. Um, um, I would win if I could dig to um, seeing more cards on my turn, the determined victory smash. And I was right. able to use this to get to it. Um, but, I mean, at that point, it could just be a card that draws you a card instead right. of a card that flips. That is flips. basically where I was getting, because I definitely understand wanting the plus ones in your five-hander. Absolutely. The thing is, the window shopping, that top is random. It's not always going to be something you want to play. Uh, and if we're looking for literally a 2-5 a with a plus three mid block that digs us uh, one more card, passing the torch is right here. Right. That makes sense. I think I think our window shopping should just be just just straight up before passing the torches. I think that's a much more effective form of draw power in our five hand size character. All right. Um, so then, terrifying injury. I do like I do I do like the terrifying injury in here. I think it's got a really really sick deadlock, and it's a nice form of of speed reduction that we can get right back if we take the next attack. Basically, the exact play you were describing. Um, past that though we also have the i'll protect you and high value target as like pseudo speed reduction i'm not sure if we need either of these cards inside of our deck to be honest with you yeah because a lot of our foundations like if they're destroying our foundations and giving my a speed to block a lot of times when i was playing my game that block came from half block so you know we're we lose a foundation, but we get a counter. So it was like we just one for one, right? Of. And they had to cut for two um, to do that. So, I mean, at that point, we didn't really need to protect the foundation in the first place because our we're already two for one in our opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, because they burned an action card, they cut themselves to burn another card out of their hand as well to blast one of our foundations and then still put a counter on our character. So. Yeah, I think oh. the thing about muscular is, and we're gonna we're gonna see this a lot more once we get into a couple of the next cards. But generally, you're gonna block like one attack max as this guy, and then take the rest of them and damage reduce them uh, to to just make it much more efficient for you to be gaining your counters. Um, and one of the biggest ways we're gonna do that is between things like Mast Menace and Quick yeah, Create, and is. yeah. So Mass yeah, Menace and sense. Quick Creation are going to kind of provide like a little bit of a damage reduction engine inside of our deck. You know, imagine you do this, right? We'll commit Mass Menace, minus one damage. We'll throw it into the card pool, minus two damage. Uh, this now has minus three damage, all right? We're going to take your minus three damage attack, build the Mass Menace back down, face down. They play another move. We self-sacrifice the Mass Menace, minus one damage. We quick create it, it back into the card pool now, minus two damage. We take your minus three damage, yeah, we take your minus three damage attack again, build back our Mass Menace right back down. Jeez. So like, it, like loops, loops and engines like that, I think that's kind of like the way to really, really take advantage of this character. And I think life does it super duper well with those two cards. Uh, and that, that kind of stuff coming in is what really just makes the speed reduction not particularly relevant on your character because you're looking to block like one thing and then just reduce everything down to these these really really baby numbers sure so like i'll protect yous could just be four mass menace i, I do think there should be four mass menace in our deck for uh, sure yeah. i think this on the, the one on the table i was like this card is just way too verbal to not play i was like i need xrs of this card this card is gonna be fire it's very, very, very good. It's very, very good. It just does what our character wants to do, which is just chump these really, really, really puny attacks, um, and then proceed with this with this game plan of you know stacking all of these counters and really, really just putting the pressure on our rival. Um, by by Jeez. by so like on the inverse of that logic, you know we talked a lot about how we're going to be getting a lot more counters now. We're going to be pumping a lot more damage. I don't think we need floating around my babies in this deck anymore. Sure, I, I think that could be probably I, I would be into a few releases 
uh, just so that we keep a reasonable amount of zeros in our deck because we do have back alley haymaker and overhead reversal in here now. So I don't think we want to play tight lip as our only zero. Um, there's also the recovery girl's kiss if you want to play that. Uh, but I think release is probably a better option if you're into that. Right. It's a plus two high block as well. Yeah, yeah. Our zones are our zones are a little low on our off zones. So if we could fit some highs and lows in here, that would be pretty nice. We have thirty one mids. <laughs> 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 but I mean, again, we're also like super okay to half block things because we're muscular, right? That means we get counters. <laughs> right. <laughs> So that, that's going to even our zones a little, keep our zeros up. Um, and uh, let's see, what what does our, our spam count look like? We got 7, 10, 13. We got 17, and we have 34. So we have 17 spams and 17 non-spams. That's a pretty nice ratio right there. Um, I have a couple other foundations here chilling in the sideboard. I think Bonds of Friendship is is good if you want to find more high blocks into your deck. Uh, wall Cling is also really good. Face Shield's really good. The only, those are kind of more sideboard cards if you really, really want it, though. Uh, how do you feel about new training method, though? I think new training method probably 100% should be in the deck because there's a lot of things that, like, if you just see that off the top of your deck when you're making a check, you don't care about new training method anymore you could just flip it and pick it up right it gives you now you got your mass menace online and like it's just kind of crazy yeah also it it finds pump up which is like insane yeah finding finding multiple pumps up pump pump ups i should say is uh really 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 good for this deck um so it enhances we're... your character yeah so it looks like we've we've gotten ourselves down to 61 cards uh, with our 20 attacks. So, like, numerically speaking, we're not in a bad place right now. Um, I think we could throw in, like, new train, like, three new training methods, bring ourselves up to 64, and then that's not a bad place to be. For sure. Um, it, our, our low blocks are definitely not looking too pretty, uh, but I think that just might be a thing we have to be a little bit okay with um side some wall clings side some faith shields you know if those like if like super duper low attack decks are really 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 getting you down right yeah um, otherwise you're muscular so you really don't have to sweat your zones that that much you can half block low attacks and get counters and be perfectly fine with that for sure um, so UA high. there's a UA high in the deck still. And, yeah, uh, yeah, we can actually we can just delete that right now because there's no more allies for us to grab. <laughs> I, I watched my opponent mess up a couple games uh, off of UA high though because forgetting they, forgetting the draw and discard. And, well, they drew a card and discarded a card, and he's like, you know, and then and then he mentioned you know during my turn he's like, well, uh, I just discarded last turn the block that I needed. I was like, yeah, that's usually, you know, you don't know what attack I'm going to throw. But, you know, he's like, I held a high and I held a low. No, and I didn't ha have any lows in my deck because he didn't know that I was going to, like, try to throw a giant, you know, uh, what is it, uh, the giant home run comet. And yeah, I like that our, our zones are pretty mixed up now, too, right? We got a couple we got a couple highs. We got the really, really threatening high with the double head over. Uh, they have to hold a low in case a muscle rush comes in for like big damage. They have to hold mids to be able to stop back alley. We've got a we've got a nice a nice flurry of zones now with this lineup. Um, muscle rush is a low. That's nuts. Yeah, yeah, it's so annoying. It's like, do you want to block this three low for three? No. Oh, well, actually, it's a three low for seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like, well, now I have to hold this low block, and then it's going to deal me one anyway. He's going to get a counter anyway. It's Yeah, it's such an annoying card. This card's really nuts. Sure. Um, so last thing on the list is assets and actions. Um, I like Ready, Set, Go in not five hand size characters. I think right, the, sure. the odds of us getting to find this when we're going second and have enough foundations to take advantage of it feel really low um, as opposed to some of the other things we could be doing with actions in our deck i think recovery time is very good in our deck we take five or more we gain four we gain a counter fantastic 
Alternatively, we block with Ruthless Mockery, and now your stuff just has minus two damage for the rest of the turn. I've got a Masked Menace and a Quick Create on board, so like, we're gonna be minus six if we really want to. Like, this card just ends string turns sometimes. Sure, and recovery time is a really good answer for that set two foundation that's, uh, I think it's an ultra rare, it's unique. It says like, if I would draw cards, it makes me like discard a card out of my hand and recovery time you would just pitch the recovery oh, time yeah just the one the from uh the one from set two yeah it's like a three diff i can't yeah yeah it's like it's a big three diff it's like a set two only uh something like that um but yeah that ability doesn't remove it just commits and then the other one destroys yeah like, messes up our, our every turn messes up our I mean, training yeah it's, yeah we're but we gotta draw our cards yeah i'm very into recovery time that makes sense. Yeah, I think we can we throw three recovery times in here. We just race it goes out of here. We're gonna be healing our butts off now. Um, and so, last thing is we talked a lot about quick creation uh, and how it really really plays into our damage reduction re reduction reduction engine. <laughs> 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 and so, I I think new ch I think training weights is training weights is a fine card, but I don't know if repeated damage pump is really worth our asset slot in this deck because. We're muscular. We're gonna put a bunch of damage on our things anyway. Sure, I didn't have momentum a lot of times to be able to, even when I did have a lot of throws, to be able to ready it. I was committing foundations, mm -hmm. and I would only find myself committing it maybe one time, and then it might as well just been another card. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, we will get momentum now because we have like the muscle rush and the <coughs> overhead, but I still think there's probably better ways to be spending it. Um, in a similar vein, if we look at Tracy Cape in this deck now, we don't have a lot of really good targets for this card. The best thing I feel about is like unflipping and excited for blood. That's obviously like super sick. But if we think about it, right? If we think about unflipping and excited for blood, that's like heal four. Um, whereas if we just have a quick create on board, that's like heal two every single turn. Right. Um, Makes so, sense. So I think there should probably just be four quick crates in this deck. And since we're a five-hander, I don't know if we have a lot of room to play other assets in here. Right. Um, that makes sense. So that now puts us at a 64-card deck. We got 20 attacks, which is pretty good. We have 18 highs, 32 mids, 14 lows. Again, our lows are not fantastic, but we've got a lot of damage reduction to deal with the low attacks. Uh, on top of that, you know, we can go ahead and sideboard things like wall cling, things like face shield, if we really feel like we're getting, you know, super duper pressured uh, by those off zone blocks that we just don't have inside of our deck. All right. And that's going to put a wrap on this build a deck. Big, big thank you again to Brandon Barry for being my good patron, supporting my content, and letting me do this interactive experience with him if you guys enjoyed the video i would love some feedback down below and of course if you want an experience like this you can also check out my patreon where you can commission a build a deck experience with me just like this or any of the other options for commissioning custom made content from me and cementing yourself as a part of the channel forever if any of that sounds awesome i'm gonna have links to everything in the description and in the pinned comment down below above all else though thanks so much just for making it to the end of this video i really really appreciate it and i hope i see you in tomorrow's upload